but we're trained to, you know, after a disaster, to pick up the pieces, brush the dust off ourselves, look after ourselves, make sure we're okay, our families are okay, then go out into our neighborhoods. CERT's all about people helping people. A very good concept. Oh, it is. And that's what I really love about it. It's, it's people helping people, neighbor helping neighbor. It's uh, neighbor eyes and ears uh, to be there right after a disaster event to start helping people right right around your own neighborhood, but more importantly, let emergency management folks know how bad it is in that particular area. Absolutely. That's a, that's a critical thing. And we've been utilized many, many different ways to do just that, to be the eyes and ears of the community, to communicate during disasters with the Emergency Operations Center so that they know what kind of a professional response they're going to need in maybe my neighborhood or your neighborhood. And I can say firsthand, uh, uh, with Hurricane Wilma, uh, I was in the Emergency Operations Center here for the city of Deerfield Beach and seeing firsthand the value of CERT and how it helped us here in Deerfield, Carol and everyone else involved in Deerfield CERT, and how they helped us in the Emergency Operations Center. Uh, but beyond that, again, stressing the value then for anyone out there uh, to, to really seriously think about getting CERT certified and being involved and helping in that way. And uh, how did this whole CERT concept start? Hey, that, it's very interesting. This actually started in 1985 in the city of Los Angeles by the Los Angeles Fire Department. They saw a need to train civilians. But it wasn't until 1987 with the Whittier Narrows earthquake that they realized that they had to train civilians for post-disaster response because they were the ones right there. What happens is people have an inherent nature. They want to help. If you see a little kid fall off a bicycle, you want to go down and pick up that kid. Well, what happened after some of these major disasters, we found out that the people that were wanting to help were becoming victims themselves. Now, you have all of the victims plus all of your wannabe rescuers that, are, that really have good intentions, and now you have twice the amount of victims. So we started the program, and it became a nationwide program. Mm -hmm. and, and as you mentioned, earthquakes, it's not just uh, hurricanes, and even here in Deerfield Beach in the last week, there were some events where CERT uh, was involved. Let's talk about that. Absolutely. Just a couple of days ago, there was a major explosion and apartment fire um, in one of the complexes here in the city. CERT responded to that event to assist the emergency responders. We're not here to replace emergency responders. We're here to assist and help them in whatever you know they need help with. Mm -hmm. So we were we were very happy to come out and serve and be there that day. And, uh, and like being here today, uh, also you've helped us greatly around the Disaster Survival House and it's always uh, have appreciated that. Uh, who can join? Anybody can join the CERT program, Eric. There is no requirement as far as physical ability. In the CERT program, there's jobs for everyone. If you are in a wheelchair, we can use you for documentation. It doesn't matter. As long as you have a desire to help people, even if it's just helping your own family, we want you to be trained so that you know how to be a safe rescuer and not to become the victim yourself. So, uh, someone is interested and uh, so there's coursework, so let's talk about how, how all that works. Okay, to become a member of a CERT team, there's a 20-hour FEMA-approved course that you need to take. And there's individuals that are certified to teach this course. In the city of Deerfield Beach, we've had some of our fire rescue personnel trained to take the course. It's a 20-hour course. There's nine different modules. And it covers disaster preparedness. It covers terrorism and CERT. Very basic hazmat. Not that we're going to go to a hazmat scene, that's way beyond the scope, but we are trained on how to recognize a hazmat scene so we don't become victims. We recognize the need to bring in somebody else. We take care of fire suppression, fire safety. We're trained in disaster medical operations and disaster psychology. So there's quite a bit, and you don't need any previous training, just a desire to learn and a desire to serve. Yeah, absolutely. That is really extremely uh, comprehensive for sure. So what happens after the initial training? After the initial training, different cities 
do it differently, but here in Deerfield Beach we have monthly training meetings, and I know many of the local Broward County chapters meet on a monthly basis as well, where we hone our skills and learn more advanced skills, so that you know, any time you're in a disaster response situation, you need to keep those skills sharp so that you never become the victim yourself. Mm -hmm. So after hearing all of this and someone wants to become involved, how do they go about doing that? The, the best way is to contact your local jurisdiction. There's CERC programs nationwide. We are part of uh, President Bush's Citizen Corps initiative. Do an, an internet search, find the CERC team near you, or call your city and ask them how to get involved. Very good. Carol, thank you so much. Uh, absolutely wonderful program, and uh, you personally have done uh, wonderfully with us in the Disaster Survival House, well, and all, you. all of you at Deerfield Beach, CERT for sure. But uh, a wonderful way to get connected for any community uh, throughout South Florida or beyond. It's a nationwide program. It really comes in handy. It is. Thank you for having me. All right, Carol, thank you so much. Well, uh, we really have enjoyed our uh, live event here at the uh, Disaster Survival House. And um, it's HurricaneExpoNow.com. Uh, all of these interviews uh, will uh, continue to be on the Expo site. Uh, they've all been archived and recorded. They'll be there for you. You can listen to Carol and I again or any of the uh, experts we talked with. So we certainly encourage everyone to uh, visit uh, all the showroom booths uh, in the Expo. Uh, more to come, so keep visiting the Expo, explore and learn, and uh, keep up on the uh, uh, events that are upcoming through the schedule, and uh, utilize, really utilize the resource of information uh, that's there for you, and to learn about the businesses and the products that are there that you can then uh, participate with to help you, yourself, and your family and business uh, get prepared for the hurricane season or any other disaster. So behalf of all of us here with the hurricane morning at the Disaster Survival House and the Get Talking Now team and everyone involved with the Expo. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, yes, please visit the Expo and uh, we'll see you very soon here throughout the Expo. Thank you.